Previously on NYPD Blue. Connie McDowell? Yeah, that's me. Read Ortiz? I guess we're partnering up. Oh, yeah, hey. You are ruining my evening. Now you get over here and sing with me. Mrs. Hornby, <clears throat> I think we better get a few things clear right away. I want you to sing now. How much more clear do I have to be? I took this job to protect you. And if we got along, great. But obviously you're looking for another maid or a babysitter. Well, Eddie didn't have a problem with that. I'm not Eddie. I don't sing and I don't fetch. Fine. Who are you working with? Connie McDowell and Andy. That's so? Yeah, I figure work with your kid. Maybe you and me get to hang out. What's with the bags? You're such a great detective already. I'm sure you can figure it out. It's time you left. You don't want to talk this out? You stand at the 15th? Yeah. And there's nothing to talk about. And you don't think that this is taking it too far? Come on, guys, what is this, a union meeting here? Let's go. Huh? Morning. Morning. No ID, one in the head. Yeah, two males, Latino, mid-twenties. One cracks her in the head and takes the cash. The other one in the back for a minute. Then came running out with the DOA following throwing shots. Don't tell me the DOA's a cop. Not with a pearl handle gun. Anybody talking to Price? No, yeah, Clark just started. McDowell and Ortiz are doing a canvas. Okay, everybody just stay seated and don't chatter. Nobody got to look at the perps. How many Johns were there? Uh, the DOA, two others, uh, this guy who was too trashy to boogie with the rest. <clears throat> Mama son didn't recognize any of the Johns as regulars. Yeah. Hey, you. All right, come on, wake up. Yo, sleepy. What'd you see here? Well, I was getting the bag or something. your nuts off, then what? Then I hear a pop, 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 and I wake up with a cop poking me in the ribs. Get a look at the guy who did this? I, I gotta go home. Hey, 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 hey. A man died trying to stop this robbery. I think that deserves a minute of clear thinking. My car is just out front. Can I go? Go back to sleep. Give me back those keys. It's your ass. Excuse me. You got anything on the canvas? Yeah. ESU found three wallets under a car down the block. One of them was at DOA's. Down Ortiz ran them back to the massage parlor to see if the madam puts the owners of the other two in the place. Chief of D's call. In the last month, there's been four massage parlor rip-offs in the Bronx. Same setup? Same description on the perps, same MO, same type of guns. Anyone shot? Ours would be the first shooting. The team's working it out at 5-2. They're coming down to compare notes. One of them's your dad. Okay. You got any problems with that? Oh. Andy? They come down to help on our case, or we helping on theirs? It's your case, but you work it together. No one's shut out of the room. Lieutenant? If you got any problems, let's hear them now. I'll take it to my office. I'll transfer you. Our DOA was a shopkeeper with a pistol permit. Figure he got ripped off in his room, and then chased him for about trading shots. The, uh, Mama San said one of these guys, Terrence Olson, was in the waiting room when the shooting went down. He's a cardiologist in Soho. He's a dick on the phone, but he's coming in. Good. Robbery on Baxter. Connie, you and Reed are up. Greg, you and Baldwin help out. Let's do it. I'll tell you in the car. Have you got a minute? It's very important. Yeah, in here. First of all, Mrs. Hornby wanted me to extend her deepest apologies if she offended you in any way. Tell her no big deal. Hmm? No. I don't know exactly what happened. I don't care, but I'll be the first to admit she's not the easiest woman to get along with at times. Look, <clears throat> it's nice of you to come down here and everything, but uh, I think Mrs. Hornby's been worrying about this a little more than I have. Second of all, Mrs. Hornby would like you to come back and provide security. Oh, no. No way. Brand new start. She promises it won't happen again. Like I told her, she's better off with somebody who, uh, you know, entertains. Somebody who can sing, uh, work with balloons, maybe. Honestly, I think you're right. But she feels more comfortable with a detective in her home. And she won't give me a moment's peace till I get you back. So ask Eddie Gibson for another referral. She doesn't want to meet anyone else. Look, I'll tell you what. I'll add $50 a shift. That's $250, which I would like to see you get anywhere else for four hours of doing basically nothing. Yeah, because my whole goal in life, work-wise, is to avoid as much work as possible. I apologize. 300 That's 600 a week. Cash. I got a young son at home. It's not worth it to miss him two nights a week. Detective, let me let you in on a little secret. 
Mrs. Hornby doesn't have any children. Eddie Gibson worked for her for a year and a half. Eddie's driving a brand new SUV. Eddie is being treated by the top oncologist in New York. She cares about those who are close to her. Things a guy like Eddie Gibson would do or would put up with to get those kind of handouts, I wouldn't. So that's not a big selling point with me. You can lead a horse to water, I guess. You know, I got work to do. When you go home and realize your mistake and call to get the job back, the offer will be back down to 200. Yeah. Go away and play your phone. Two white males pose as exterminators they get into this lady's apartment. One's keeping a visit, the other's going through a jewelry box. She gets hit, starts screaming, they book. Where is she? Bellevue. Is she gonna make it? Yeah, she'll be all right. Her uh, vision's going. She couldn't give us anything for ID on either. These guys yeah. heard the screaming, chased the perps. One perp got away, they held on to the other, a uh, Donnie Hertzner. Who's he? He's on his way to Bellevue also. We got a little uh, banged up in a scuffle with these guys. Anybody see anything? I wouldn't still be here, yeah. Take that, we got this. Hey, fellas. Guy must have been a handful. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, he was throwing elbows and kicking. Must have been eyeing something, because he didn't quit. Where were you guys when this went down? Right up front here. I'm doing a roofing job. I come down for some tools, and I hear a woman yelling for a life. Next thing, these two guys shoot out the door, and me and him start chasing them. You live around here? Yeah, in, in the building, just above Mrs. Woodrow. Heard her scream. By the time I got out the door, the two scumbags were all the way down the street. He was um, struggling with one of them, and I gave him a hand. Yeah, if you heard anything on her, she gonna be all right? We don't know yet. You, uh, <clears throat> you gotta look at the one who got away? Back of his head. Yeah, nothing. Well, once we get a name on the guy, we'll have you take a look at pictures just in case you can ID him. Sure. Thanks for helping out. Yeah. We're gonna head to Bellevue, talk to the victim and the perp. Right, we'll finish up here. Okay. All right, we'll be in contact when we're ready to show you some photos. I don't get a car? There you go. We'll call you. You call me. Johnny Hertzner? Yeah. He's in the OR. Why? He developed some bleeding. There's old ladies around here somewhere. Shelly Hertzner? She's all pissed off because she can't see him. I'll go get her. Me and my husband have a standing agreement. What's that? He calls me his old ladies on the couch that night. Yeah, I've always wondered what big romantic came up with that pet name. Seriously. How long have you been married? Two years. We dated for two before that. And how was he with you being in vice? He had a problem with the hours, the outfits. So you were ready to get out of there? I was ready to do whatever I could to save our marriage. Is it better? We're working at it. Shelly, uh, I'm Detective McDowell. This is Detective Ortiz. I don't want to see Donnie. They won't let me see him. Who was he running with today? What do you mean? He did a burglary today. And whoever he did it with hung him out. That's why he got beat up. Well, I don't know anything about it. Okay, so please, just let me see him. Tell us who he was running with today, and we'll let you see your husband as soon as he's out of the OR. And it didn't come from me? No. Andrew Syme. And he's been hanging around trying to suck Donnie in ever since Donnie got out. Call it into Greg and Baldwin. When can I see him? I'll find out. Hey, Don. You just uh, out on a case. Yeah, I heard. I can't stick my head in to say hi to my old friend from the Bronx. Come on in. How's she doing? She's great. She's working out great. Who's she partnering with? Connie? Somebody? McDowell, yeah. What's she like? Married? Divorced? Party girl? Single. Party girl? On the squad, she's not. Around. How about the men here? What's their story? Why? Well, I've worked with cops for a long time now, and I know. Cops are dogs. Admit it. Well, I didn't deny it. But I know one of your codes is that a cop never goes after another cop's wife. Now, that same rule apparently doesn't apply for an assistant DA's wife. Now, if anything, at Rita's last command, 
They went after her like they've been shipwrecked. You know, some resentment from me, my office, lawyers in general. I, I don't know. That's not happening here. But if some of the guys do get uh, inappropriate, I'd hope that, you know. I'm not going to keep an eye on your wife for you, Don. It's not like I'm asking for one of your kidneys here, Tony. I'm not going to keep an eye on her. Let's make this the last time we talk about it, huh? If I was a cop, you would. You're wrong. Hey, it's great scene. You've been through this drill a couple times before, Andrew. Yeah? Looks like you cooperated, testified against your accomplice, and worked out a plea each time. Yeah. So? That how we doing this today? Doing what? What did I do? When you're old and gray, Andrew, and you're regaling your grandkids with stories about your wild youth, and you gather the little moppets around, tell them about the time you uh, posed as an exterminator with your buddy Donnie, and how you tried to rip off the 80-year-old woman. But she wouldn't uh, give it up. So you sucker punched her and ran leaving Donnie behind to get his ass kicked. Then, then go on about how you, you, you've been busted before posing as an exterminator and how people saw you flee the scene in your exterminator outfit and how you'd never worked as an exterminator before so there was no other reason for you to own the uniform. But you might want to leave out how when the cops came, instead of ditching them, you had the exterminator coveralls balled up on your bedroom floor. Yeah, okay. Let's write it up. The accomplice, Andrew Simon, he went for it. He acts like he's on a snoot full of DDT or something, but he cleared up long enough to pin the whole thing on his running buddy, uh, Donnie Hertzner, who was two civilians detained at the scene. Yeah, hey, what's Hertzner saying? You talking about Belton? He went DOA about 10 minutes ago. You're kidding. From what? Epidural hematoma, bleeding into his brain. Off the beating he took from those guys on the street? Looking like it. We gotta find out what happened out there. Well, all we've been hearing is these two guys basically were good Samaritans who responded when the old lady started screaming. Perp was throwing punches too. And one of the guys got a busted lip trying to hold the perp till the cops got there. That's some of it. But now we gotta find out everything that happened. Let's go. You got a second? Tell you what I'm not up for. It's going back to the old nonsense of us having to act like we don't know each other at work. I'm not going to do it. I think I'm pregnant. Think? I took a test. Twice. They both came back positive? Yeah, otherwise I wouldn't think I'm pregnant. You dropped this on my lap. I'm sorry if I'm a little mixed up here. That's what's been going on. That's why I've been the way I am. Well, how did this happen? I thought you were on the pill. I am, but I'm pregnant. It's gonna be all right. So what's next? I don't know. I gotta think. Well, at what point do I get involved in the decision process? I'll let you know. Exactly. It's been a while. Hey, Brian, how you doing? How's Louise? Real good. Everyone's good. Pop? John? Come on, shake hands or something. <clears throat> Brian Halverson, Andy Sivowitz. We ready to get started? Coffee. Coffee. We've had four reported massage parlors hit in the last month. Two Hispanic males in their 20s come in early morning, stick up the madam and hit the road. Any luck with witnesses? Madam's put on the floor right away. John split before we get there. Did you get any IDs on the Johns? People don't show IDs in places like that. Well, on ours, ESU found wallets dumped nearby. One belonged to the DOA. Another ID was identified by the madam as belonging to a John. No, there's just no indication that the Johns were ripped off, so maybe they're not related. What kind of guns are perp scary? Silver colored automatics. One of the guys have a mustache, the other clean shaven. The guy with a mustache and a woolen hat. Maybe they are really. Yeah, I think first step, we get on the phone to commands in the Bronx and have them pull 61s on wallets reported lost or stolen the day after your robberies. Why not just skip right on with our lieutenant and explain the oversight? I didn't say there was an oversight. Just meant that we should cover all our bases. And let us take care of the commands in the Bronx. You hunt for your John lost his wallet. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, Dr. Olson to see you. Speak of the devil, here he is. We'll be looking in. What is there to talk about? 
I'd rather you just gave me the wallet. Let me get back to the office. We need to talk to you about how you lost it. Just fell out of my pocket. Any idea where? Well, if I knew that, I wouldn't have lost it, right? When did you notice it was gone? When I got home. Were you in Chinatown last night? No. You ever heard of a massage parlor in Chinatown called the Shanghai Diamond Garden? Please, if I could just have my wallet. We can't do that, Dr. Olson. It was part of a homicide investigation. The guy who tried to stop you from being robbed died from his wounds. Now, we would like to think that you did all you could to help him before you took off. But if not, now's the time to make up for it. Meaning what? Well, start by telling us what you saw last night. I don't know about any robbery. And I think I should talk to my attorney before I say anything else. Were you a part of this robbery, Dr. Olson? Now, why on earth would you think that? Well, then that why I... would you need a lawyer, sir? Help us, and we'll get confessions from these perpetrators. No one will know you went to the place. No one will know you cooperated. I think I need to speak with my attorney. We'll be in touch. Man asks an attorney, you just keep on like an instead of word. I thought he might come off it. You teach him that? I might have. Next time, me and Hobbs can take the room. You take the phone calls. What are you talking about? That wasn't exactly a success in there. He wasn't talking no matter who was in the room. We'll never know, will we? You've been working this three hours. We've been on in a month. We'll take the room. We contacted an individual, Josh Lurie. Reported his wallet stolen in the morning of November 2nd of this year. It was the day after our robbery at uh, House Lee Massage in the Bronx. Mr. Larry admitted to being robbed there, but he couldn't identify the perpetrators. He did say that when he reported the credit card stolen, the company inquired about a purchase that same morning at an electronics store on Bruckner Boulevard. The name of the shop is... A guy tried to buy a big screen TV with Lurie's credit card. The clerk couldn't keep him there, but when the guy split, she got his plate. Who's the guy? Vincent Perez. Junior's looking into him now. Grab him up. Hey. I've updated a few bosses in the last 26 years. If he wants more than the bare bones, he asks. And don't call my son Junior in front of me. Perez has a rap sheet for grand larceny. Lives in Throg's Neck. That's between the Fordham Road and the highway. We got a quick way if you want to follow. They'll find it. You ever had a partner before? Of course. You keep it strictly business, or did you happen to chat about your personal life? This a roundabout way of getting to me and my dad? Look, I talked to you about uh, Cynthia and Andy Jr., and, and if Theo throws a decent pitch or barfs in school, you know about it. If there was something you could do about me and my dad, I talked to you about it, but you can't. Doesn't mean keep it a secret. You're not a neutral party. You guys hate each other. I don't hate us. We just... <clears throat> we don't think the same. Now we're keeping secrets. What happened with you guys? Hey. Legally, when do you read a guy his rights? As soon as he's in custody. Before you talk to him or after? Before. And how many times have you done that? Never. Anyone with half a brain would lawyer up. Why? When your dad and me were at the 2-8, we worked a push-in robbery on an 84-year-old woman who got beat with the butt of a gun. We got the perp in. He gave a full, detailed confession. When I was on the stand and the DA asked if I advised the perp of his rights before I talked to him, I said yes. Yeah, but you hadn't. When your old man got on the stand and I asked him if I'd given the perp his rights when I said I did, he said, you never heard me do it. Maybe he didn't know better. No, he knew better. So he did it to spite you? He was scared of getting caught in a lie and the case was tossed. I gave him hell for it and when I drank, I gave him worse hell. In public, in front of other cops, two months later, the perp did another push-in, and an old lady got killed. I got drunk and found your dad to fight him, but he wouldn't come out of the bar. I pushed it way too far. The fact is, he got on the stand and he told the actual truth. I wish got an old lady killed. I'm sure a week doesn't pass when that's not on his mind. Unit 1 to Unit 2. Suspect is running up on a gray bicycle. Unit 2, moving in. I'm sure he's got his version. That's just mine. Freeze, police! Don't shoot me, don't shoot me! I said freeze, you're gonna get shot. Just stay down, nobody's gonna shoot right, you. What's on. your name? I didn't do anything! Just answer the question. Vincent Perez, I swear I didn't do anything! You hold your tongue till I tell you differently, we'll be good friends. You keep talking, we got problems. You understand me? Excuse me. Excuse me! The suspect is coming with us, Brian. Perhaps riding with you, got a habit of getting bruised in the way of the house. Did he teach you that too? He's all yours.
Soda? Sure. Uh, just to confirm, Mr. Perez. You understand your rights as we read them to you. And you're willing to talk without an attorney present. Yeah, and I think I know why I'm here. If... Before you say anything, relax. Take it easy. We're your friends. We're trying to help you. That's good to hear. Now, if I could just explain to you why... Let me why... explain something to you first. We want to help you, but only We'd way let him the guide roll. You tell us the truth, which I'm absolutely ready to do. But if you lie to us, our hands are tied. Understood. Where were you early this morning, 2 a.m.? Work. I'm a stock boy at the supermarket. Is this not about the credit card? Now, tell us about the credit card. Just please. I can't do any more jail time. I'll tell you what I got. It. Just help me out. Okay? We'll see. Julian Amena sold it to me for 50 bucks. I've been out of jail six months. And straight. All of it. But I'm making jack at the market. And I wanted this Sony flat screen. So I did some stupid. Where did Alameda get the card? Well, he didn't say. He said anything about being a stick-up man? I don't know him real good. And we're just supposed to believe this. That's all I know. Please. I really do not want to go back to jail. No promises. But we'll see. Alameda's places. Julio Almeida. Now we heard. Honey, not vinegar. That's what gets the bees. Thank you. We wanted to talk to you about what happened this morning. Okay. Those two good Samaritans who apprehended one of the burglars, did you see them grab him on the street? I did. Were you there the whole time until the cops showed up? I was. They fought, all three of them. Like bear cubs in a gunny sack. Were they fighting the whole time, or did the burglar ever quit fighting? He quit, but he kept running his mouth, so they gave him one good. What do you mean by that? Is that Armani or a knockoff? Sure. Because it's working either way. Sure. Just tell us what happened. Okay. The burglar dude was kicking, screaming, and punching, and the other guys were giving it back. They ended up on the ground, and then there was some talking back and forth, and the big white guy, whack, nailed the burglar's head on the curb, and that shut him up. How many times did the white guy whack the burglar's head? Once. Why? Because the burglar's dead because of it. Well, screw him anyway. Speaking of which, hmm. So they both have the suspect on the ground and the fighting had stopped. Right. Then McPherson knocks the suspect's head on the curb. I remember McPherson has injuries from getting hit by this guy. But the fighting had stopped. So McPherson wasn't defending himself. The suspect was mounting off at them. Doesn't make any difference. The suspect capitulated. All violence had ceased. No one was in danger of any physical harm at this point. McPherson committed an aggressive act that led to the suspect's death. And that act constitutes deadly physical force under the penal law. So what's he looking at? Manslaughter, first degree, B felony. Mandatory jail time. Right. What about the other guy, Ewell? He was holding the suspect down when McPherson hit his head. Yeah. Acting in concert, equally culpable, so that's manslaughter too. But no mandatory jail time. Possibly probation if he testifies against McPherson. So let's bring them both in. This is why I signed up for this job. Have a seat. We need to talk more about when you caught and detain that guy. Okay. How's the old lady? She's fine. Who started throwing punches? He didn't. Throwing elbows. Anybody hit him in the head? I hit him in the jaw a few times after he connected on me. This all standing up? And we ended up on the ground. You found the scumbag you did it with yet? Yeah, he's locked up. So what's this all about? You have a gun or a knife on him? No. When the other guy helping out held that dickhead's on his back, I pat him down to make sure. What's the problem? He died. From what happened on the street? They think so. What, like a heart attack? Brain injury. He looked fine when they took him away. He was walking around. Did he hit his head when you were fighting? No, I don't know. Look, there's an old lady screaming out the window, and I helped out. I got kicked and hit in the process. There was a lot of other people on the street just watching. Me and that black guy are the only two that did anything about it. Now, you come at me with this. 
Am I under arrest or something? No, just trying to find out what happened. I told you. Please, Mr. Alameda, do not move. Oh, oh. 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 Son of a bitch. Freeze! He's off from now on. All right, you wait until me and Johnny have another conversation with a doctor. Get him to ID this guy. The doctor lawyer up in the room. He's got a lawyer up again. It's a waste of time. How can covering our bases be a waste of time? You go cover him. I'll give you an hour. How about you just wait till we get back? What are you doing here? What do you want? We need another minute of your time, doctor. I told you, I don't have anything more to say. And we got a homicide to solve, so we can talk in private or hear you whoring out in front of your patients. Well, then we can head out to Westchester, talk to your wife. That's blackmail. And you should be sick with yourself that we got to threaten you into standing up, where if you'd have followed your oath and stuck around, you probably could have saved that guy's life. He had a bullet in his brain. He had no pulse. He was dead. Just tell us if you saw any of these guys rob the Shanghai Diamond Garden last night. We're gone. Him. Done? You see the shooter? He was who hit the woman in the front. I really have to go now. I appreciate it. Have a seat, Mr. Yule. What's going on? I've encountered a bit of a problem, Mr. Yule. Namely? The guy you and Mr. McPherson detained at the scene, he died as a result of Mr. McPherson slamming his head against the curb. Because he was tired of that little prick cussing and fighting and kicking us. Was he kicking and fighting when Mr. McPherson slammed his head? You mean, at that moment? He ain't looking at no charges brought against him, is he? Possibly. Oh, man. We've been instructed to tell you that if you testify against Mr. McPherson, you could save yourself jail time. Jail time? What's jail time got to do with me? The guy died as a result of injuries he received while being detained by you and Mr. McPherson. Well, I didn't hit his head on the curb. You were holding him down. Look, he robbed an old lady. The lady was screaming. Mr. Apparently Ewell, she was... We know what happened. We know you were doing the right thing, and nobody in the squad is happy with the ramifications, but the man died. If you agree to testify against Mr. McPherson... Mr. McPherson? The only one on the street to get involved? Mr. McPherson, who got punched by that asshole like I did? I'm going to testify against him? What kind of punk-ass bitch do you think I am? It's an option you need to know. You take your option and shut up. I want a law here, because this is about some of the most messed up bunch of... It's an open offer if you change your mind. Oh, damn. Hey, John, you see my dad in this corner? Oh, they're in the poker room with Mr. Alameda. How long have they been in there? All right, since they got back, a half hour? Son of a bitch. How many times I got to say this? I wasn't in no cat house. Alameda, I don't think you understand. We're trying to help you. How it help? You cuffing me in front of my boys. Ruining my rep. As a decent guy. If that was disrespectful, we're sorry. The guy smacked him and he's apologizing? Definitely laying on the honey. You really want to help me? You give me a slice of pizza and another soda, because I can't think when I'm hungry. Then you better be ready to talk. Well, I won't know until it's here. We'll get the food, and then we'll keep talking. Just, just go get my food, y'all. Add some smokes. I thought of the wedding, so we took a shot. Yeah, that guy's tough. Just getting started. He wants food. You have the courtesy not to talk to him, not in the middle of our interview. You bet. Back in a little while.
What do you want? There's no smoke in this room. There's no soda drinking and no pizza coming either. Guys who hit cops don't get buffet meals. Hey, what's up with you, man? What other guys have? Not coming back. They got sick of your attitude, so they sent out for cops who aren't afraid of getting their hands bloody. I didn't mean to hit that dude. He startled me. No, you sucker punched him. Clear as day, Julio, and I got news for you. That cop's my father. Oh, yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> and he my uncle. He's my dad, you prick. I don't give a damn who he is. Bro. Oh. Julio, now listen, keep up until morning unless you tell us what happened at the Shanghai Diamond Garden. Then you're out of here in that central booking where no one can get to you. Or just keep saying you were getting laid last night and when my arms get tired from beating you, I'll just handcuff you to that chair and put this sign on your chest and then we're going to parade in every cop in the house to come in and work out on you. I didn't mean to hit nobody. Man. And last night, I'm sure you didn't mean to kill that guy either. But somehow he is dead. I didn't kill him, man. Then who did? And don't say you weren't there or you don't know because we got you identified, Julio. Picked out. Carlos shot that guy, man. I ain't shoot nobody. What happened? It's my job to get the dough from the lady out front while Carlos goes and back to the john. All right, and is that the same setup in the places in the Bronx? Same deal, except this time, Carlos goes and back and bam, bam, bam. Comes running out front because some psycho's shooting at him. Where are we going to find Carlos? Down at the pool hall in the concourse. Supposed to meet him then in an hour to give you up the tape. Write it all down. You start with the places you took off in the Bronx and finish with the one in Chinatown. Two years. Two years of this. He's in jail. In a lawsuit. Fired off the job. John, lighten up on the kid. He got the job done. Detective Corey Beecham called and asked me to tell you 400. He said you'd understand. Yeah. Nine. All right. What was that, 400 a week? A shift. You sitting around while she sings old tunes? I'd do it in a gorilla suit. That'd be easier. She couldn't see my shame. You're crazy if you turn it down. <clears throat> what do you say after we grab Carlos, we give the collar to your dad and Alverson? You think? I haven't worked in a case for a month. And if we take the collar, it'll just be uh, another thing eating at your old man that you don't need. How could you be dead, man? You watched the interview? You're a bum. You're as big a bum as he is. If you're pissed off because we stole your play, as far as we're concerned, you can have the collar. You turn my kid into a goon, and then you rub my nose in it by throwing me a bone? We're not throwing you a bone. We're doing what's right. After what you did in that room, you got a lot of nerve talking about doing what's right. I wouldn't have hit him if he didn't hit you. You know where you can stick your collar? Clark, you want to piss on my shoes, you knock yourself out, but it's us who got the beef. Your kid don't belong in the middle. I'm not talking to you about my family. You keep on like this, you won't have a family. And I got you to thank for that. Look, 20 years ago, you and me had a legitimate beef, and maybe I pushed it too far. Back then, I pushed a lot of things too far, and I'm sorry for that. Now, accept my apology and quit dragging your kid through the mud because you're angry at me. You know the phrase, day late and a dollar short? Yeah. My son and me didn't talk for years. And not too long after mending fences, I lost him on the job. Not a day goes by that I don't wish I could have them years back. You don't want that happening to you. Go to hell. I'm, I'm processing this and dealing with this the best way I can. By yourself? For now, yeah. I can respect that. Not having to worry about us, about you, would be one less thing weighing on me. Then don't worry. Are you leaning towards uh, one decision or another? No. I don't know. Well, I'll support whatever you do. Thank you. But just so you do know, if you're thinking about having a kid, I'll be there. You can get married, whatever you want. Baldwin, I... Just listen. I want you to have all your information straight for when you decide. Okay. I grew up without a dad. And I swore I wouldn't turn around and do it to my child. 
I've made conscious decisions throughout my life to prevent that happening. But here we are. And if you decide to keep the child, I'll be there. You want to stay here tonight? It's so good to see you. You too. There's egg salad and sliced tomatoes in the refrigerator. Oh, thank you, Mark. I have fun tonight. Thank you, ma'am. I'll see you at 10. Corey mentioned one of the things holding you back was you wanting to spend time with your son. Yeah, well, that's right. Well, bring him next time. I love children. He's in bed usually by 8, so uh, I've got it all worked out. Good night, ma'am. I think Marta has been stealing from me. There's jewelry missing, and I don't have that many visitors. <coughs> Okay. But I haven't told Corey yet. Uh, why not? He'd fire her outright. So what do you want to do? What about those little tiny hidden video cameras? Do they work? Yeah, but those are more about catching a nanny, taking a wooden spoon to your kid, trying to uh, see a maid who has full access to your place to begin with. Palm and earring and grainy black and white is a little more difficult. I'm just supposed to stand by and watch my jewelry fly out the door. Now you relax. I'm sorry. Leave something of value in a specific spot. Make sure that nobody else has access to the room and then see if it turns up missing. I did. A necklace and it's gone. Then you got a problem. Could you talk to her without letting on that I put you up to it or making it look like it's about stealing things? Well, that conversation is going to be about the weather then. Would you please take care of it? I don't need to know any details. How long has she been your maid? Ten years. Do you mind if I sing? You know, I was thinking maybe we should uh, go over to ground rules so we don't repeat what happened the other night. We'll be fine. Let's just jump in and see where the winds of fate take us. You make me feel so young. Remember that one? Dancing cheek to cheek at the prom. You make me feel like... Spring has sprung. You are a delight. The moment that you speak, I want to... You get out much? Oh, no. When was the last time you were outside? Not since the attacks. Go play hide and seek. I want to go and bounce the moon just like a toy balloon. You and I are just like a couple of tots <laughs> running across the meadow, picking up lots of forget-me-nuts. He's just starting to go to sleep because he was, uh, he was really wound up and he didn't have any ice cream after seven. All right, I'll go talk to him. How'd it go? Oh, this is good. I got to look at the maid for stealing jewelry now. Oh. Anything I can help with? No, I got it. And you're doing the right thing. Think of it as adding to Theo's college fund. Yeah, I guess. All right, I better go. Let me say goodnight to him. I really appreciate you doing this, Connie. You're doing me the favor, Andy. Anytime. Oh, um, yeah. He cleared his plate after dinner without me even asking. Really? Yeah. Hi, Daddy. Hey, Squirt. Connie's got to go now. Sleep tight? Okay. I had a lot of fun tonight. What are you coming back? Next Monday. I promise. I promise. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>